And welcome to Women World Leaders Podcast. I'm your host, Tawana Lowry, Women's Empowerment Coach and Executive Director of Miss Overcomer Global. And I'm very excited you joined today as we explore what the Father wants us to know about Himself and who we are as His powerful ambassadors. So let's get started. The holiday season is typically a time for celebrating with friends and loved ones and enjoying time together, but it can also present the greatest opportunity to experience the pain of disappointment. And though we might not want to readily admit it, disappointment is a big part of life. I mean, disappointment hurts and stings especially if it involves relationships. But most of all, disappointment steals our joy. So during this podcast, I want to review three strategies that will help us overcome disappointment regardless of the circumstances and keep our joy. You know, as the new year approaches, I really believe these strategies will arm you with a game plan to transcend the disappointment traps that might arise in the coming months. Like you, I've had numerous disappointing experiences, but one that stands out actually happened when I was only eight years old, believe it or not, and it happened during the holiday season. You know, back in those days, I'm kind of dating myself a little bit, we could still call it a Christmas party. And second only to the last day of school, it was by far the most anticipated day of the entire year. I remember it like it was yesterday. I mean, every hallway and classroom was covered with beautiful handmade decorations and the tantalizing aroma of Christmas cookies It hung like a thick fog, consuming every corner of every room. I mean, I can still remember all the details right today. And weeks of anticipation were followed by hours of celebration. And then it all concluded in the most exciting part of the day, which was the student gift exchange. And the ritual Thanks to my little teacher, she was so sweet. Her name was Miss Wise, and no, I'm not kidding. Her name was Miss Wise. So the ritual consisted of her passing out each gift individually in a very orderly fashion, and we sat there like little soldiers waiting for her to give us our gift. Well, what after seemed to be a lifetime of waiting. She finally found her way to my desk with the present that had my name on it. And as she approached me, my exuberance quickly devolved into disappointment because my sweet little teacher wasn't holding a beautifully wrapped gift with a shiny bow. No, no, no. It was nothing of the sort. Instead, she was carrying what appeared to be a ball of aluminum foil. That's right. It was a ball of aluminum foil, if you can believe it. And with this awkward little wince of embarrassment on her face, she placed this horrifying blob on my desk. Well, my initial reaction was total confusion because I'm thinking, surely my name is not on that thing. I mean, it wasn't even a present. Seriously, who in their right mind would give a ball of crumpled aluminum foil as a Christmas gift? Well, fighting back these giant crocodile tears, I quickly snatched it off my desk and placed it in my lap, just trying to remain expressionless. But as I clutched it really tightly, kind of in an effort to hide the evidence, so to speak, I could feel that there was something wrapped on the inside. And I thought, well, maybe this isn't as bad as I thought. 
Should I open it? Should I not open it? Should I put it in my book bag and wait till I get home? My little brain was going back and forth with all these different options. But soon, my eight-year-old curiosity got the better of me. And with my eyes straight ahead, and again, my emotions fully intact, I kind of slowly pushed back the foil with my fingertips. And that's when embarrassment gave way to complete bewilderment because inside the crumpled ball of foil was a plastic donkey. (laughs) Oh gosh, can you just believe this? So it, it goes from bad to worse to worse. So it was kind of this little gray burrow that you might see in the nativity scene. It had these very sad eyes and this little bowed head. I mean, this thing looked worse than Eeyore, right? And I thought, a donkey? Are you serious? A plastic donkey? Like, what on earth can you do with a plastic donkey? And believe it or not, just to add insult to injury, it wasn't even new. It was old. It was scratched up and scuffed up. And so as I gazed at this unimaginable nightmare of a present, my mind immediately started thinking about all the effort I had gone to shopping for a Christmas gift for my classmate. And I spent a ton of time trying to pick out the perfect gift. And then I wrapped it with tender care. And, you know, I wanted to make sure it was just perfect. So I found the the beautiful bow to put on it. I mean, this thing was gorgeous. Yet, despite my tireless effort, it was returned with a used plastic donkey wrapped in aluminum foil. You know, that event (laughs) happened more than 40 years ago, and yet the disappointment I experienced branded in my memory. So here's the point. You know, sometimes we give our very best to people and circumstances only to receive a plastic donkey wrapped up in aluminum foil in return. And sometimes, situations over which we have no control cause us embarrassment and heartache, and they leave us with a stomach full of disappointment and letdown. But what if we could overcome those deflated emotions and bounce back with a fervent determination to keep our joy, to overcome the disappointment and keep our joy. Well, that's what these three principles I'm about to share with you, that's what they are designed to achieve. So principle number one is, in order to keep our joy, we need to keep it in perspective. So a few days after the Christmas party, my mother learned the details behind the gift I had received. You see, my little classmate, her name was Teresa. She and her family were really struggling. In fact, her father had lost his job and her mom was fighting a serious illness. And Teresa's family had no money, no insurance or medical for, you know, for their medical expenses. In fact, the community was getting together to provide money for food and and just other basic needs that they had. And look, they were facing a very disappointing holiday season. And I also learned that the little plastic donkey she gave me was, in fact, part of their family nativity scene. And it just so happened that little sad burrow was Teresa's favorite character piece, So in actuality, she gave me something very near and dear to her heart. She gave the best she had to offer. You might say her gift was sacrificial, sort of like the offering of the widow's might in the Bible. And look, although my hurt and disappointment was real, it was. Learning more about Teresa's situation shed new light on the entire event, and it helped me view it from a higher perspective, from heaven's perspective. And as a result, my little disappointed heart was transformed into a heart of compassion. Keeping it in perspective gave me the emotional strength to keep my joy. You know, the Bible talks about how joy is our strength. The joy of the Lord actually strengthens us. 
Okay, so the second principle for keeping our joy is to keep giving your best. Well, when we returned to school after the holidays that year, I decided I was going to give Teresa what she had given me. She gave me her best. Even though it didn't look like it, she actually did give me her best. So how could I give her any less? And for the remainder of the school year, I poured into her life as much as possible. I helped her with her homework so she could make better grades because her family was struggling. No one could help her study, and she wasn't making good grades. And so we partnered together, and I helped her study. And we sat together at lunch so she wouldn't be alone. And because we wore the same size clothes, I gave her some of my clothes and some of my shoes. Well, Teresa and Tawana became BFFs <laughs> before BFF was a word, right? And then, you know, it helped us both excel because of it. She discovered there was a great student on the inside. She was just needing a little bit of help. And she had ability to learn and grow. She just needed some help. I discovered some leadership abilities that allowed me to inspire others to excel. I didn't know that existed, but it came forth because of this. And look, staying true to your core values in the midst of pain is so vital for overcoming disappointment. And that includes being intentional to give your best regardless of what others give you. And I'm going to say it again. We have to be intentional to give our best and not not so we can try to, you know, have praise on us, but but because we truly want to do it. You know, the, the Bible says that whatever we do in word or deed, to do it is unto the Lord and not people. And God's always calling us to higher, a higher and higher living. And that means giving our best as if we're doing it unto Him and the other people are the, are the recipient. And that changes hearts over time. Just think about the times that it's happened to you when people have given their best to you and how it changed you. Well, we're called to do the same thing. But I also want you to think about it like this. If you want to keep your joy, then be sure to engage in activities that set you up to achieve it. I mean, that seems pretty simple, right? If you want to keep your joy, be sure to engage in activities that set you up to achieve it. After all, it's pretty hard when you think about it. It's pretty hard to give your best while you're experiencing sadness and disappointment and a bad attitude. It just doesn't work. Try it sometimes. It doesn't happen like that. Okay, so let's wrap this up with the third principle for keeping our joy, and that is keep looking for the good. So on one of the coldest days of the year, not too long ago, I got caught in a huge traffic jam, and this thing went on for what seemed to be an eternity, and it just so happened I was in uh, on my way to get my car heater repaired, so I'm in the cold, uh, coldest day of the year in a cold car. So the temperature on the outside was 35 degrees and it wasn't that much warmer on the inside. And look, that's not exactly the best day to get stuck in a traffic jam with no heat. But while I was sitting in my very frigid car, staring at this endless line of traffic, it brought to light another important truth about overcoming disappointment. And here it is. There is a big difference between being cold and being left out in the cold. You know, the first is simply an unpleasant circumstance of life, but the second is a distressing place in life. Well, in the same way, there is a big difference in being disappointed with a temporary situation of life versus being disappointed with life in general. You know, most disappointments we encounter are nothing more than temporary, unpleasant interludes between normal events. You know, Paul talks about these light afflictions, right? Most of it, at the time, it doesn't seem light, but in light of eternity, it's pretty light. But the problem arises when we 
allow the occasional letdowns of life to create this fatalistic attitude towards life. And that's exactly what the enemy wants us to do. He wants us to project all the way out into the future. But that's not what the scriptures teach us to do. So what I've discovered is the most effective way to avoid this pitfall that the enemy definitely wants you to fall into is to maintain a posture of gratitude when you're in the disappointment. The scriptures tell us that in all things give thanks. Look, it's not because we like it, but we have a choice. And our attitude, whether it's gratitude or not, is going to determine how we live. So I'm sitting there shivering in my car that morning, and my choices were pretty simple. I could either complain and grumble, or I could be thankful and humble. So I'm going to say it again. We can either complain and grumble, or we can be thankful and humble. And so I chose, I, look, I got to say this, I wasn't happy about it, but I couldn't change it. The only thing I could control was what I chose to do in the moment, how I chose to think in the moment. Was I going to align my thinking and my speaking with God's word or align it with the circumstances? Well, I chose to wrap my mind in a warm blanket of gratitude. And I decided to focus on the long list of things I was thankful for. Of course, I didn't relish sitting in the cold car for two hours of traffic. I mean, I don't want to sit in two hours of traffic, no matter what the weather's like, but I couldn't change it. And honestly, the situation could have been a lot worse. I could have been stuck out in the cold. And so I began to recite out loud all the things I was grateful for, things like warm clothes and a coat and warm socks, and a full tank of gas, and a semi-hot cup of coffee. I had good health and money in the bank. I had friends and family that loved me, and so on and so on. I mean, I could, you know, there's a whole other list of things I could be thankful for, but, you know, we only have a, a, a few minutes here. So as I focused more and more on the good that day, my stress began to dissipate, and I really wasn't so focused on the cold and the traffic. I became less focused on what was trying to steal my joy and more centered on what would revive it. And I think this is for somebody. I think the enemy has tempted you to get so focused on what's trying to steal your joy that it's gotten you off balance, like your equilibrium, your spiritual equilibrium is out of sync. And the Lord wants us to get more centered on the things that will revive our joy. That's for somebody. Take it. I love you. Pray about it and receive it in Jesus' name. Okay, so here's the other thing. I really do believe that when we form the habit of looking for the good in the not so good, look, for the joy set before him, right? For the joy set before him. What did Christ endure? And and we aren't called to do anything close to that. But I really believe that when we form the habit of looking for the good and the not so good, we actually teach our minds to be joyful. You can train yourself to be joyful. Now, you may not have been raised in a joyful home, and you may not work around a joyful circumstance, but that doesn't mean you can't be. You absolutely can do it. It's a choice. All right. I'm not suggesting that we should never experience disappointment. We're going to. It's part of life. We live in a fallen world full of fallen people doing fallen things, and that includes us. Look, we've done fallen stupid things before. We've disappointed people. We didn't mean to. It just happens, and that's how life goes. But what I am suggesting is that we can use the plastic donkeys of life. And you know what I mean by that. We've all had that experience, right? We can use the plastic donkeys of life as a reminder of the importance to keep it in perspective, to keep giving our best, and to keep looking for the good. And I believe when we do so, we keep our hearts and minds positioned to keep our joy, not only during the holidays, but throughout the whole year long. 
Well, it's been a pleasure spending time with you today. And thanks for listening to Women's World Leaders Podcast. So join us each Monday, Wednesday, and Friday as we explore together God's extravagant love and your courageous purpose. So visit our website at womenworldleaders.com to submit a prayer request, register for an upcoming event, and support the ministry. So from his heart to yours, we are Women World Leaders. All content is copyrighted by Tawana Lowry and Women World Leaders and cannot be used without express written consent.